Mr. Who makes maps. One afternoon, he was visited by two of his neighbors, Ronnie and his young friend Dick. They had come because they were over a map Ronnie had made of his paper route. So Mr. Donaldson invited them into his workroom to talk over their problem. Ronnie, the older boy, was going on a camping trip with his family. Dick was to deliver papers for him, but he couldn't understand Ronnie's map showing which houses to serve. He said the railroad tracks ran the wrong way and the houses weren't in the right places. Ronnie said there wasn't room. He had to get the river in. When Mr. Donaldson suggested that they work it out on the sand table, Dick immediately put in the railroad tracks, running right through town. Ronnie started to put in the streets, but Dick saw that he was not going to have room enough to get them all in. So Mr. Donaldson gave Ronnie a yardstick to measure the table to see how much room they had for laying out a paper route six blocks long and four blocks wide. When Ronnie announced that the table was just a little more than six feet long and four feet wide, Dick had an idea. They would make each block exactly one foot long. Then they'd have Elm Street and Cedar Street and the streets would be drawn into scale. One foot equals one block. Mr. Donaldson showed Ronnie some models which they could use to build the neighborhood in miniature. They picked out some models that looked good and began placing them on the sand table. Dick joined in and the neighborhood quickly took shape. It wasn't long before they had finished their model. When they called Mr. Donaldson to see it, he pointed out that the model was just like an airplane view. Everything looks much smaller than it really is. But everything is smaller in the same amount. It's all to scale. Now Dick could see how the paper route went. He would start at the station and go down Main Street to Elm. Then down Elm to First and up First to Cedar. Dick could understand all right, but he couldn't very well carry the sand table around on his bicycle. He still wanted a map. So Ronnie said he'd make a map by measuring off the streets and drawing them on a big piece of paper, just as they were on the sand table. But Dick was worried about how he could keep himself straight. When he looked at the model from the side, the schoolhouse was in one place. From one end, the schoolhouse was in a different place. And from the other end, it looked still different. He might get all turned around. They agreed that Dick could keep it straight if they let this edge of the paper be north. He could remember because the railroad station was at the north end of the paper route. Then Ronnie began drawing the streets on the paper, one foot apart, just as they were on the sand table. Ronnie had drawn in all the streets when Dick raised another objection. The map was still too big to carry around on a bicycle. He wanted a smaller map. It was Ronnie who figured out how they could make a smaller map by changing the scale. When they made the model, they let one foot equal a block. Perhaps now they could use a different scale and let a couple of inches equal a block on their map. Ronnie had the right idea, and with the drawing board set up beside the model, he measured the paper for the new map. He found that on the new map they could use a different scale, a smaller scale, and let only three inches equal one block. So a block which was 12 inches long on the model was only three inches on the map, one-fourth as much. When he had drawn in all the streets, Ronnie asked if it was all right to use a little square like this to stand for a house. Mr. Donaldson agreed the little square would be a good symbol to stand for a house. Then he pointed out how a map is a kind of picture which uses lines and symbols to show things. Maps are really a kind of writing, and you have to learn to read maps just as you learn to read timetables and books. A map tells anyone who can read it a great deal about the country or state or town it represents. The legend helps us to read a particular map.
Any mark or symbol can be used on a map as long as it is explained in the legend. Ronnie decided they would need a legend on their map so Dick could read it. All the houses were put into scale, one inch on the map for every four inches on the model. Then came the railroad depot. And this is the way Ronnie showed the railroad tracks. A line with little marks across it, like railroad ties. He saw it that way on the big map. And of course he had to add the symbol for railroad tracks to the legend. He decided to use an X as his symbol to show the houses where the papers were to be delivered. Dick could easily read this map. He would start at the station and go down Main Street to Elm, then down Elm to First, up First to Cedar, up Cedar to Main, down Main and then back to High, then down High to First and across the bridge. But Dick didn't like the bridge, so he drew in the symbol, which is usually used for bridges. And here is the symbol usually used for a church, a square like a house with a cross on it. And the symbol for a school, a square with a flag. Ronnie completed the legend and the map was done. It was a fine job because it showed the location of the houses and Dick or anyone who knew how to read maps could use it. When Mr. Donaldson started putting away the drawing board, Ronnie said he'd show Dick where he and his family were going camping. They were going to Leadville in Colorado, but he had trouble finding it. Mr. Donaldson suggested he try a different map, a map of Colorado in the Atlas. This map has a grid made of vertical lines and horizontal lines. To find Leadville, we first look it up in the index, which is arranged alphabetically. It says H11. Ronnie found H. And then 11. He followed both lines of the grid till they met. And there's Leadville. Every map has some sort of cross lines for locating things on it. Now Dick had a question. Why is it that on this map the states are in different colors? Are the states different colors? Is Colorado really pink? Ronnie said no. When you travel along a highway and cross a state line, the land looks just the same on both sides. Unless there's a sign, you don't know when you go from one state to another. On a map, we use color to indicate where one state ends and another begins. Dick noticed how the color blue shows water, lakes, rivers, and oceans. Then Mr. Donaldson showed them another map which uses color in a different way. This is a physical map which shows the elevation or height of the land with different colors or shades to show how the land lies from highest to lowest. You can tell by the legend which color or shade means what. The legend tells you how to read any map. These are all maps of the United States and they all tell different stories. But the stories are easy to figure out when you use the legend as a guide. The other thing you have to know to read a map is its scale. We can use the same size piece of paper for a map of one state or a map of all the United States or North America. Or the Western Hemisphere. Or the whole world. We can show any area on any size paper just by using a larger or a smaller scale. 
legend and scale are the keys that unlock the story of any map. Just as they explain the story of the boys' map, the story of where Dick is to deliver papers while Ronnie on his vacation.